What's up, everybody? Happy Friday. Hope you're doing wonderfully well. I've had a good week. Have you ever gotten discouraged from doing good, right? Have you ever just been like so fed up from trying to do the right thing that you stop doing the right thing? I know I have many times. And I want to encourage you guys today, if you find yourself in that season, and, and, and maybe that season is kind of like, why bother? You know, I'm so frustrated with things aren't going my way or whatever. Um, it's a very important place that I think we can learn a lot from. So uh, thanks for everybody who jumps on. Feel free to share this out, invite other folks into the conversation. Um, you know, I, I teach a lot from the Bible. And, and as soon as I do that, people begin putting up bricks, right? You know, they're like a brick mason. They're like, no, 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 the Bible. You know, and they build these walls so that they will not receive it because of religion. Um, it's interesting that people reject God because of religion. It's a very dangerous thing to do, uh, to reject God because of religion. You know, for me, the Bible is just simply a declaration of how we were created to live and how we are to function and prosper in the world. And so if you see it as a religious book and hellfire and brimstone and your mom or daddy or your grandma hits you with it or whatever, or it makes you feel like it's a bunch of rules and whatnot, it will never yield abundance in your life because you're looking at it the wrong way. So my challenge to you guys is to just pause for a second, take down the brick walls that you build when it comes to the gospel, and just 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 listen for a second. Today I'm talking about two reasons why people don't prosper. This is from Mark 4, Parable of the Sower. Two reasons why people don't prosper. I'm going to go into both of them. Reason number one is that people demand that seeds bear fruit. And reason number two is that people hoard their seed. So two reasons why people are not prospering is they're demanding that seeds bear fruit and, and they are hoarding their seed. All right. Now I'm going to go into both of these. Um, the parable of the sower, we often see this from a churchy perspective of like, we are the recipients of the seed and God's word is the seed. And so we got to bear fruit. We got to be good soil, you know, and it's about that. And that's fine. It's good. It's wonderful, but it's not the only angle. This isn't just about God's word and prepare your hearts and get rid of the thorns and all the stuff that we often hear. This is also to God saying to us, you are the sower, right? You are the sower. You've been called to sow seed. It's not just about the recipient and obeying so that. See, I think a lot of people fall into the trap. They're like, all right, if I obey, then I will bear fruit. And so they try to do good, and they don't see fruit, and then they get angry at God. That's not what this is about. There is a different mindset that we have to have to say that you already have the fruit, bro and sis. Like, you've got fruit, and it is good, and it's abundant, and it's never-ending. So just go out there and, and do, right? Just be, you know? Just go out there and be and stop worrying about trying to obey so that you can get fruit. The fruit's already there. You just have to be patient to let the fruit fall from the tree. So, so the parable of the sower... There are four examples in this parable that, that Jesus talks about now, and I, and I want to focus on each of them because they're very important. Number one, it says the birds come and eat up the seed, right? Um, and and, and there, there are a lot of birds in life, you know, especially over on Twitter. <laughs> I love the Twitter birds because they're out there and they're just throwing negativity and they're trying to just take up the seed. You know, you're trying to do good in the world and you're trying to add joy and hope and encouragement and, and people are just shooting it down. You know, you try to do good and somebody criticizes you. You, know, you try to do good and whatever. There are, so, there are tons of birds that are going to try to eat up the seed that you sow. You can't let that bother you. It says it right here. Jesus said, listen, birds are going to come and they're going to eat up the seed. Don't worry about it. The second, it says that there's rocky soil, shallow, rocky soil. These are people who are more concerned about their circumstances than actually growing beyond their circumstances. All right? There are people out there who are going to be more concerned with who's sick, who got diagnosed with this, what's the latest on President Trump, what's the latest on Time News. I'm going to read the news. I'm going to focus on everything that's wrong. I'm going to look at every single circumstance, and they will not bear fruit because they are focusing on their circumstances instead of focusing on God. Don't let that bother you. Keep sowing seed. Keep doing good. The third scenario is thorns of life. There are people 
who have let good things become bad things, right? These are people who have let prosperity and wealth and success in their job or their marriage or caring for their kids, whatever, all kinds of good stuff become bad stuff. And so they won't let God's see, they won't let your goodness take root in their life because they're so focused on these thorny things that are choking them out. Don't let that bother you. Keep going. Keep sowing seed. The fourth is the, is the one that God promises abundance. It's good soil. Good soil. Fertile soil. And it produces 30, 60, and 100 fold return. 30, 60, and 100 fold return. Now, now think about this. One of the things that we were talking about on the radio show the other day, this is powerful. In one out of the four scenarios, abundance. In three out of the four scenarios in the parable of the sower, scarcity, zero return. Literally, zero return in the first three, 30, 60, 100 fold in the uh, fourth one. So, so be less concerned about how the goodness that you're trying to do, how your um, generosity, how your joy, how your encouragement, be less concerned about how it's received and more concerned about just sowing it. You know, the parable of the sower teaches us is just sow seed. 25% of the time, it's going to produce a hundredfold, 30, 60, hundredfold return. 75% of the time, listen, people are struggling. They're more worried about their circumstances. They're more worried about their bank account. They're more worried about whatever. Don't let that bother you. Don't let that stop you from sowing seed. And, and I think in my own life, one of the time, one of the things that I have really been um, sh have struggled with in the past, and I don't really struggle with it anymore, and I want to encourage you guys in your own life, is do not grow tired in doing good things because of what people say about it. Don't grow tired in doing good things just because of somebody else's opinion. Like somebody else's opinion does not uh, dictate your life. Somebody else's opinion does not dictate your worth. For, for those of you that are sitting there and thinking, man, what I have to offer is just not quite good enough because this person isn't believing in it or this person said this or I don't have this many followers or, you know what I mean, it's not being received. And I'm talking about everything from like those of you who create content online to those of you who are trying to parent. Like think about this as a parent, like just trying to do the right thing and, and raise your kids well, right? And your kids are rejecting it. It's okay. It's okay. 25% of the time, it's going to fall on good soil. 75% of the time, junk's going to get in the way. Don't let that discourage you. If you're trying to lead your coworkers or pour into a neighbor and they're rejecting you and it's frustrating you, keep going, man. Like 75% of the time, no fruit. 25% of the time, pff, abundance, abundance. So the number one reason why people don't prosper is they stop sowing seed based on what they see. They stop sowing seed based on other people's opinions. They stop sowing seed because, you know, and I'm not saying, um, you know, I'm not saying that you shouldn't like, you know, be, uh, be teachable and be uh, humble enough to let people speak into your life. It's different. If God's telling you to sow seed, which he says, be joyful always, don't let somebody else say, dude, why are you happy all the time? Chill out with all that positivity or whatever it is. Just keep sowing seed. Keep sowing seed. Now, now that's the number one reason why people fail and they're not prosperous is they stop sowing seed based on what they see in the opinions of people. The second reason is because people begin to hoard their seed. This is, whoo, American culture, you have failed us when it comes to this. We are a culture who is taught, get seed, get seed, get seed, get seed, get seed, get seed, hustle, bust your, sorry, I almost said a bad word. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. It's, it's, it's not about getting more seed. You have everything you need. God has given you everything you need. Stop trying to spend your life and your days getting more seed and then putting that seed in a barn because you don't want to sow it out there because people are going to reject you, people are going to be ungrateful, or you're afraid of losing it. 
I'm, I'm, I'm getting preachy right now and I apologize. I'm talking just about the frustrations that I see in my own life and that I feel from people that I talk to. Stop being afraid. Stop being afraid of sowing seed into the world because you're so daggum concerned about how people receive it and, and you're afraid of losing it. And so you end up building barns to store your seed in it and you die with barns full of seed. You know, one of the things that God said to me and, and, and taught me is that fruit does not grow in barns. Fruit doesn't grow in barns and it doesn't grow in the microwave either. This process of God's abundance and prosperity in your life, it takes time, it takes patience, and it takes you sowing seed. You have to be just a radical seed sower. And that's what we see in Jesus. He didn't stop. He just kept sowing seed. Always generous. Always generous. Always generous. Jesus wasn't concerned about getting more. He wasn't concerned about building barns to sow up his, store up his seed. Man, it's about giving. It's about abundance is about giving away. That's what this parable teaches us. 30, 60, 100 fold return in your life if you give it away. So if you're waking up every day and you're concerned about how am I going to get seed? How am I going to get seed? How am I going to get seed? I promise you, number one, you're going to be exhausted. Number two, you're going to be stressed. And number three, you're not going to have anything because it's a scarcity mindset. You might have a fancy barn and it might look awesome and it might be full of seed, but that seed is going to rot and die and there will be no fruit. And I'm just saying, if you want to be prosperous in your life, you got to sow seed, man. You got to throw seed out there. You just got to sow it into the world. So I think for you guys watching this, like you want prosperity and abundance in your life. You want God's best for your life. You want the best version of you. You just got to keep sowing seed. Be less concerned about how it's received and more concerned about pouring it out. Don't let fear and worry and doubt and all this junk cause you to store up seed in barns. It will never yield a return. Get all that junk off of you. Stop demanding that seed bear fruit. Stop being impatient. Matt Ham, stop being impatient. I need this. This is what I'm learning. Stop being impatient. Just keep sowing seed. And then on the flip side of that, don't let fear cause you to hoard up your seed in barns. I promise you, if you let fear keep your seed in a barn, it will never bear fruit. So today, you guys go sow some good into the world, sow some joy, sow some hope into the world, be encouraging, lift people up. And when people spit on you, mock you, make fun of you, say, hey man, I love you and hug them and just love on them and keep sowing seed. Stop letting all this junk in the matrix get you down. Be joyful, sow good seed, and I promise you it'll bear fruit. Happy Bowtie Friday.